Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. We're really lucky that we live in an age where there's a huge variety of pet steaks available, even with just the click of a mouse. However, there's also some really bad choices out there for pet snakes that some people unfortunately make the mistake of picking up. So today I'm gonna to count down the 12 worst pet snakes. So if you wanna have a positive experience keeping a pet snake, you should avoid these snakes at all costs. The first snake on my list seems pretty obvious to be a terrible pet, but these are kept a lot more commonly than you might think, and that would be venomous snakes. As crazy as it may seem, there's a huge variety of different species of venomous snakes available as pets, anything from king cobras to gaboon vipers to black mambas. In fact, in many states, this is perfectly legal. Some states and some countries have laws preventing keeping these animals without a permit, but in other states, you don't need any permits to keep these species. So the obvious risk is that if you get bitten, you could end up six feet under, but even if you survive the bite, it's likely to be a very painful experience, often with permanent physical damage from the bite. And it's gonna also be a very financially burdensome experience. You're typically looking at over $100,000 between the hospital bill and the anti-venin. When you go down to your local hospital, uh, they're going to have antivenin, which is the serum that they use to neutralize the cytohemoandoneurotoxic effects of the venom. However, they will typically just have antivenin to neutralize venom from the local species, like your typical copper bellied rattle moccasin. They're not going to have antivenin for Mozambique spitting cobras or fair de lances or bushmasters, so you're going to have to maintain a supply of antivenin for your species of choice which is gonna cost you quite a bit of money. So I understand why people are attracted to venomous snakes. They're amazing animals, they're beautiful, they're fascinating. You know, I totally get that. However, there's so many other non-venomous snakes available that are equally beautiful and fascinating. So I don't understand why you would take this huge risk just to keep a venomous snake. So venomous snakes obviously are a terrible choice for a pet. The second type of snake that makes a really bad pet are wild caught snakes. Now of course, snakes had to come from the wild at some point, but in the last few decades, the art and science of captive propagation of snakes has really advanced considerably. And now almost any species that you might want to consider as a pet, and you know a lot that you probably wouldn't want to consider as a pet, are being successfully bred in captivity. So the benefits of the captive bred snakes is that in general they do much, much better in captivity than wild caught animals. If you get a wild caught animal, there's a huge stress when the animal is acclimating from, you know, going from the wild to being in captivity. And a large percentage of wildcat animals do not survive this transition. And this is even with experienced keepers who know exactly what to do to maximize their odds of success in transitioning a wild caught animal. So some people might be tempted with wild caught animals because in general, they're less expensive than their captive bred counterparts but the amount of money that you're gonna to need to pay for vet bills just to have any chance of successfully acclimating it are going to be more than the, you know, the difference you'd have to pay for a captive bred snake. So I highly recommend you avoid wild caught snakes at all costs, go for a captive bred uh, offspring. About the only reason that it makes sense for people to get wild caught snakes are for experienced breeders who need new bloodlines, you know, unrelated, genetic stock to diversify their breeding colonies. But for general pet keepers, you wanna avoid wild caught snakes at all costs. The third snake on my list is an actual species of snake, and that is the reticulated python. And as you may know, reticulated pythons are said to be the longest snakes in the world, with one record claim of 33 feet in length, although this wasn't really well documented. But it's pretty likely that these animals can regularly get up into the mid-20s, you know, around 25 feet or even greater. And so the reticulated pythons are beautiful animals, but they are one of the few species of snakes which has been documented to actually have consumed a human. Um, reticulated pythons in general have really nasty, aggressive dispositions. Although, you know, for the sake of disclosure, it seems like the disposition has gotten better since they've been bred in captivity over the last few decades. However, it's very difficult and challenging to successfully keep a snake 
it gets to that size, especially considering the danger factor. So this uh, reticulated python is an animal that really you need at least two people to handle, unless we're talking about a, you know, a baby or a very small animal. And the, you know, the danger is always there. So what I find noteworthy about reticulated pythons is they're being bred in larger and larger numbers in lots of different morphs, and they're almost being uh, push forward almost like another ball python like this is another species that lots of people can keep you know it's the next investment snake but really very few people should be keeping these animals they're just too big you know and too potentially dangerous dangerous for all but the most seasoned reptile keepers uh, there are, exist some dwarf forms there's these super dwarf localities of reticulated pythons which only get to be you know, eight to 10 feet or so. But the problem is when you cross the super dwarf with a regular uh, uh, reticulated python, the animals can get almost as big. So you're looking at an animal that's probably gonna get into you know, the 15, 16 foot range. Um, you know, definitely a very challenging animal for all but the most seasoned keepers. So I would say that the reticulated python for most people, it makes a really awful pet. And so I wanted to mention just kind of as a bonus animal, the African rock python. And so these are similar in many ways to the reticulated pythons. They're not as popular or being bred in as much, you know, many different morphs or anything like that. But there are another very large species getting to be over 20 feet long that can be very aggressive and is really makes an awful choice for a pet snake. Snake number four that makes an awful choice as a pet is another giant constrictor, and that is the green anaconda. And so there's a lot of myth about, myths about green anacondas. You know, they've been said to get up to almost 40 feet in length. The truth is that they're probably a large animal gets to be no bigger than about 25 feet or so in length for a very large female. Uh, they, they're arguably the largest snake in the world though because they're much more massive and muscular and thick than the reticulated python, which you know, might get a little bit longer. And they're extremely strong and powerful animals like retics and African rocks. They tend to be very aggressive. They don't like handling, um, you know, really not a choice that if you want a snake, you can take out and handle. And then the husbandry is also somewhat challenging because in the wild, they live in wetlands and swampy areas. So they need an aquatic habitat. So you're probably looking at, you know, needing a room size enclosure with, you know, half aquatic, half land habitat. Uh, you know, it'd be a huge undertaking. And so as beautiful and fascinating as green anacondas may be, they're really only suitable as pets for the most experienced uh, snake keepers and for zoos, things like that. They can really give this animal what it needs and balance the risk that it might have on your personal safety. Before we move on to awful snake choice number four, I wanted to say that I understand that people like constricting snakes, large constrictors, and if you must have a large constrictor, my personal favorite choice is the boa constrictor, and I don't even consider them large constrictors. I consider them medium to large constrictors. Uh, most boa constrictors get to the six to nine foot range as adults. Rarely they'll get uh, over 10 feet, sometimes up to 12 to 13 feet, you know, but that's extremely rare. If you really want a larger snake like that, which would be considered a large constrictor, I would recommend a Burmese python. These animals don't get quite as big as the retics or the African rocks. You know, they can get to be 17 to 20 feet or so, but in general, they're much more docile, much more manageable than the other two python species. Of course, they're still a huge commitment, but if you must have your giant constrictor, the Burmese python would be my choice. Number five on my list of awful choices for pet snakes are morph snakes with health problems. As many of you may know, morph snakes have become increasingly popular over the last few decades. Morph animals contain genetic mutations, which gives them a different appearance, either a different color or different pattern or both. And many morph animals are perfectly healthy and can make great pets, like this VPI T-positive albino boa constrictor. But other morph animals have a mutation in a gene that's associated with a health problem. So when you were talking about a mutant gene, this is essentially a mistake in the wild type or naturally occurring form of the gene. And so sometimes you don't get just one effect, you know, like a change in the color of the animal, but you also get a genetic defect that goes along with it. 
There are quite a few examples of morph snakes that have health problems. One example are the spider ball pythons. And the spider ball python has a neurological uh, impairment. The animals have what's known as a head wobble. So the, wo the head kind of wobbles back and forth when you hold the snake up. And this is genetic, it's linked to the spider gene. Unfortunately, it's not, doesn't appear to be something that can be bred out. Another example is, affects the boa constrictor, and that's something called a super motley boa constrictor. And so the motley gene in boa constrictors causes this circular pattern down the back of the animal, and a single copy of the motley gene doesn't result in any health effects. However, if the animal inherits a copy of the motley gene from each parent and has two copies, the snake is known as a super motley. And super motley animals have a very dark overall appearance, but unfortunately they don't live for very long, maybe a year or two maximum. And they uh, do really poorly as captives, and they, apparently they have digestive issues which causes them to die at a very early age. So the super motley is definitely a boa you want to avoid picking up for your collection. So if you do get into morph animals, boas, ball pythons, colubrids, or whatever, uh, type of snake has morphs, just do your research. Make sure you pick a morph that doesn't have associated health problems. Another thing to consider with morph snakes is that they're often very inbred in order to perpetuate the mutant gene. So you want to make sure there's no health problems associated, not from the gene per se, but from the inbreeding that was used to propagate the gene. So be sure to do your research on your morph of interest and ask appropriate questions of the breeder. Number six on my list of the worst pet snakes are non-established baby snakes. So these are animals which haven't been properly established after birth or hatching by the breeder prior to being put up for sale. So when a baby snake is born or hatches, it needs to be established. The breeder needs to uh, make sure that it's feeding properly and that it's perfectly healthy. So at a minimum, the snake should eat three or four times. It should shed at least once or twice, and it should be examined, you know, probably for one and a half to two months as a minimum before the breeder sells it to the pet keeper. Unfortunately, there are some breeders who want to sell their animals as soon as they're born or hatched. I've even heard of breeders that will take entire clutches to reptile shows the day after they're hatched and just sell them. And so they don't do the hard work of getting the animals established to make sure that they're ready to go and that they're gonna thrive as pets. So they might offer them at a lower price to the unsuspecting customers. Um, but the unsuspecting customers might get a snake that isn't feeding or healthy. Um, certain species of snake can be very difficult to get feeding as babies. For example, uh, mountain king snakes, certain types of island boas, um, you know, and several other types of snakes don't feed on rodents very easily. So the breeders have to take tricks in some cases to get them feeding. They may even require assist feeding or force feeding for a while before they'll feed on their own. And this is really important for the breeder to do before selling the animals. So before you acquire your next snake, make sure you ask the appropriate questions to the breeder. Ask when it was born, how many times it's fed, what it's feeding on, etc. Just so you can absolutely guarantee that you have the best chances of a successful snake keeping experience. Number seven on my list of the worst pet snakes are pet store rescues. And so unfortunately there are pet stores out there that keep snakes in absolutely horrendous conditions. They might be keeping the snakes in a 10 gallon fish tank with astroturf as the bedding, with a hot rock being used as a heater. The snake might have two or three layers of unshed skin stuck to it and be crawling with mites. So this is absolutely heartbreaking. These places should be shut down, of course, and I really feel for these animals. So a lot of times people will see the animals and they want to do anything they can to give the animal a better home and to get it out of this horrific situation. So they end up buying it just so they can uh, take care of it and bring it back to health and give it a better you know, shot at life. Unfortunately, people that do this are enabling these pet stores. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna go out and they're gonna get another snake to take its place. And that snake is gonna be kept under the same awful, horrific conditions. So as much as you might, you know, it might tug on your heart, you should do everything you can to resist buying these snakes just as a rescue. 
Uh, instead, contact your local Bit Better Business Bureau and other applicable agencies to try to get the pet shop shut down. Unfortunately, when you buy these rescue snakes, you're just enabling this horrific behavior to continue. Number eight on my list of the worst pet snakes is a fascinating species from Africa. And this is known as the African egg-eating snake. And so these are relatively small snakes getting to around two feet or so in length. They're not brightly colored, but they're kind of cute looking. They have these big eyes and kind of a charming overall appearance. And they subsist on a diet consisting entirely of birds' eggs. So it might seem tempting for someone that doesn't want to have to feed a snake rodents to get an African egg eating snake. Unfortunately, they are too small to eat chicken's eggs. These snakes swallow an entire egg whole and they have a specialized rib which will crack the eggshell and then they swallow the liquid contents and they regurgitate up the shell which they don't eat. So you can't feed them chicken eggs. So basically they're going to need to get bird's eggs that are much smaller. The largest eggs that a uh, large adult can eat are quail eggs, you know, about an inch or so in length. And then smaller animals are going to need even smaller bird's eggs, things like sparrow eggs or finch eggs. And it's really difficult to get a supply of small eggs to feed your African egg-eating snake. So about the only way that you could successfully keep this species would be to have a colony of small birds that you breed specifically to supply food for your African egg eating snake. And these small birds eggs need to be really fresh, otherwise the African egg eating snakes won't eat them. So this complicated feeding requirement makes the African egg eating snake among the worst choices for a pet snake. Choices number 9 and 10 on my list of the worst pet snakes are two groups of snakes that have a lot in common. And these are the water snakes and the racers and coach whips. So these are all common snakes over much of the United States getting up into Canada, down into Mexico. Uh, but they have a lot in common that makes them poor choices as far as a pet snake. And it comes down to their temperament. They all tend to be aggressive, nervous snakes that don't really calm down in captivity and don't do very well. So the water snakes are closely related to garter snakes, but they tend to be even more nervous and aggressive. They typically bite when handled, and they often produce this musky substance which smells horrible. Uh, typically when you take them out, they musk up all over you if they're not biting your hand. Water snakes live on a diet largely consisting of fish and amphibians, which might make it seem advantageous for somebody who doesn't want to feed a snake rodents. However, the aggressive nature of the water snake make it a very poor choice as far as a pet snake. The racer and whip snake group are best known for the black racer, which lives in the east and northeast, and the coach whip, which lives in the southwest. And these animals tend to be longer than water snakes. They're kind of very elongated, uh, for, you know, an adaptation for living a life in the trees. And they tend to be very nervous, very fast moving snakes that are also very aggressive. So if you wanted to keep one in captivity, you would need a very large cage with lots of branches for it to climb on. And it's really not a snake you can handle because again, it's aggressive. The racers and coach whips like the water snakes are very poor choices as far as pet snakes because of their aggressive uh, disposition. The last two choices of animals on my list of the worst pet snakes are two groups of snakes which have a lot in common and these are the ringneck snakes and the green snakes. And so ringneck snakes and green snakes like water snakes, coach whips and racers are fairly common over much of the United States. Uh, unlike the rip snakes and racers, they're very small snakes getting to be typically one to two feet in length. Uh, the ringneck snake is kind of a grayish brown snake on the back and it has a very bright orange or yellow belly with a little cute little ring around its neck. These can be diminutive, you know, sometimes they don't get more than 10 or 11 inches in length. So they look like little tiny baby snakes. The green snake is a little bit bigger than the uh, ringneck snake. There's a rough green snake and a smooth green snake. And these will typically get to be about two to two and a half feet in length. Um, their overall color is this uniform bright green. It's a very pretty looking snake and very common in much of the country.
However, both the ring neck snake and the uh, green snake do very poorly in captivity. They're actually collected in large numbers for the pet trade, but there's very few people that are captive breeding these animals. So unfortunately, this collecting is having an adverse effect on the populations of these animals, which are declining. And then as far as captives, they do very poorly. For some reason, they just don't adjust to captivity. And they're often recommended as a beginner snake because they're small, you know, they're quite innocuous, they're not aggressive, and they're quite pretty to look at. And then another advantage is that they eat mostly insects. You don't have to feed them rodents. And this is often, you know, sold to beginners as a good pet snake for beginners. Really, they typically don't survive more than a few months in captivity. Uh, so unfortunately, they, become kind of like a disposable pet and it's having an impact on you know the wild populations of these animals. So I would highly recommend that you don't purchase a green snake or ring neck snake uh, unless you are able to get some of the few captive born animals available which again are very rare for these two species. And I also wouldn't recommend this for a beginner. That was my list of the 12 worst pet snakes. So if you're looking for a successful snake keeping experience, as long as you avoid these 12 choices, your odds of success are greatly enhanced. I hope this video was helpful and somewhat entertaining. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.